Yo, what's going on? I no, you can't answer that. Let's hop into this. I'm going to share to you eight quotes from my favorite author, from my favorite psychotherapist named Irvin Yalom. These quotes aren't directly saying this is what you do to overcome stuttering. This is what you do to overcome per, to overcome per, to overcome performance anxiety. This is what you do to overcome e, to overcome erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. But I think that's why it's so powerful because it forces you to connect the dots in your own head all right this is how i have gained such a great understanding of of stuttering of sexual dysfunction of interpersonal disorders because i learned all about it through my own experience and through connecting the dots in my own head with from learning from other books and other people who weren't directly teaching me this is how you overcome stuttering so it it forced me not forced me but it it all uh, it allowed me to connect the dots in my own head of taking the information from this realm of life and then seeing the similarities with speaking or with stuttering or with premature e premature ejaculation and then making sense of it through my own experience through my own living that allowed me to really really understand this shit before we get into this i want to share that i have just launched my newest overcoming stuttering course all right if you're somebody who stutters and you have watched my shit and you feel like hey chase actually understands this because i do because like i said i've the last eight years i've been just like learning and connecting the dots in my own head and helping other people who stutter from where I am right now, I've helped over seven. I've helped over seventy people overcome st- overcome stuttering. And just remember, overcoming stuttering doesn't mean one one hundred percent fluency. I'm not one hundred percent fluent, but it means not being held back at all from your speech, from your stutter, not having fear to stutter, and just being yourself. So I've my newest course how to how to do that the step-by-step guide and of course i don't focus on the stutter in this course it's all indirect on how we actually work on this and even better if you want to access the first mo if you want to access the first module for free you can do that there's a link down below so you can see if this is something you would want the full course of so you can see um kind of my approach to this see if it to see if it to see if it re- see see if it resonates with you and if it does you, you can um, message me for the full course there'll be information how to get that inside the free trial course which is in the link down below in the description just make a note of that but also watch this video if you're interested in that. So let's hop into this. Irvin Yalom, he's my favorite author. He's my favorite psychotherapist. I'm not going to um, break down how great he is. You, sh- you just gotta take my word. Like this, this guy is next level, period. This guy is next level. He's I, I think he may be like the highest re the highest regarded psychotherapist of our time of like the last 50 years or so 
pre I'm pretty sure, at least for me he is, I know for a lot of people he is too. So I'm gonna share 80 of his quotes about therapy or about or about or about personal growth that has taken him decades and decades and decades to learn and decades and decades and decades of helping of of helping clients or pay or pay or 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 patients um i'm going to share those and then i'm going to connect kind of connect the dots with it but I also want you to connect the dots in your own head of how this relates to stuttering or how this relates to, to living a to living a fulfilling life or how this l relates to sexual to sexual dysfunction and all of that shit all right so let's hop right into oh and also then I will answer two questions from the guests of from the guests all right so Two guests have asked questions to me. If you want to ask me a question, I'll answer in my next show. There's a link down below in the description. You can ask me anything and I'll answer it. So let's just hop right into the first quote. The first quote says, the act of revealing oneself fully to, a, fully to another and still being accepted may be the major vehicle for therapeutic help. The act of revealing oneself fully to another and still being accepted may be the major vehicle of therapeutic help. This resonates so strongly with me and with my experience of learning to not let my stutter hold me back, all right? I'm not gonna connect all the dots here. I'm just gonna share a little, ex a little not experiment, um, experience, all right? And the experience is that with me and all of my clients that I have worked with, when helping them overcome and helping them overcome stuttering, which means no longer being held back from it, being able to be yourself regardless if you stutter or not. It's that the pain and the suffering and the torment of the stutter or the sexual or the sexual dis or the sexual dysfunction all that it comes when you feel like you are not enough because of it and so what you do is you try to hide it you try to hide parts of you try to hide parts of yourself this part is not enough. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to stutter, so I'm not going to talk because then they would reject me. And in doing that, we, e we eliminate the possibility for somebody to fully accept us, stutter and all. And it's through those experiences of feeling accepted, stuttering and all is where the real healing process a major point of healing of the healing process is I've told this story lots I've told this story lots but when I was in Col when I was in Colum when I was in Colombia the first day I got there it was the first time I was in South, uh, in South, uh, in South America. It's first time I really traveled by myself. Oh no, that's that's not true. But it was the first time I was going to go live in a different country for a long time by myself. And I walked into this share house, and there's a bunch of people I didn't know. This was like I was 22 or something, 
And I was stuttering so much, especially because the share house was right next to this busy ass sh- street. And when I met these people in the share house, we, we walked on the street to try to get food. And it was so loud. It was like a party city. And I had to yell to try to talk to somebody and trying to yell and to talk to somebody when I first met, when I was first meet, when I was first meeting them, I was stuttering so much, stuttering so much. I remember I was talking to this girl and it was like every word was just force was every word was forceful. I had to push it out and push it. I was sweating. I was so full of tension. And I remember I got back to the house we continued talking, we continued talking, and she had to leave the next day. And before she was leaving the house, she walked up to me and she said, uh, I, I just want to tell you something. And I was like, uh, what? She's like, uh, actually, never mind. It's pro it's, pro- it's probably in a pro it's pro it's probably in a in a, in a, inappropriate. She didn't stut. She didn't stutter on it like I did. She said, "Never mind. It's probably inappropriate." And I said, "Okay. Well, now you have to tell me." And she's like, "Okay." And she's like, "I, uh, I just think your stutter is extremely sexy." And that like blew my mind. I blew my mind because in my head, I was like fucking forcing out words. I was stressed. I wasn't, it didn't feel like I was being myself, but I just continued speaking and I, I just fucking, I was not hiding from the stutter. I just continued. If I had some, if I had something to say, I knew I was going to stutter on it. I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't close up. I just kept going. I kept going. I kept going. And she didn't give a fuck. She didn't give a fuck. If she actually thought it, it was sex, she actually thought that it was sexy. And it was through that experience, I felt so light. I was like, I thought this stutter was always repulsive to everybody. But it's through staying open through not closing down through revealing myself fully that I had the opportunities to feel accepted from somebody else and that was life-changing for me that was life-changing for me and imagine if you have people in your life like five one two three four five people in your life that feel that way about you, that it doesn't fucking matter if you stutter. They fully accept you. That is so healing. So that this is just saying like, in all realms, stuttering, sexual dysfunction, social anxiety, if you open yourself up and you don't hide, you give yourself the opportunity to feel fully accepted. And there is where the healing actually heals. All right? That's huge. Let's go on to the second quote. And the second quote is, If we climb high enough, we will reach a height from which, tr- from which tragedy ceases to look tragic. <clears throat> if we climb high enough, we reach. We will reach a height from which tragedy ceases to look tragic. This resonates very strongly with me and my journey with busting quickly or stuttering. Is that what I take from this? You can take whatever you want from this. What I take from this right now is that worrying about your stutter and if you can last long those are some you're very in the you're very in the woods 
All right, you're in with the trees. That's all you can see is like all you care about, all your life, all your your mission in life is to last longer. Your mission in life is to not is to not stutter. And from that low level perspective, being in with the trees, your life looks fucking tragic. But the more you zoom out, the more you zoom out, and what I there's a couple ways to view this. There's more than a couple ways to view it, but for me, like zooming out means like having more having something you you value more in your life than appearing fluent having a bigger goal in your life so that in comparison your stutter is smaller and so that you think about it less and so that you see oh it's actually not that tra it's, a, it's actually not that tra it's actually not that tragic there's that perspective on it which is i think an essential thing to do to have a bigger goal than appearing fluent to people. But there's also a different way to think about it. There's more than all this, but like actually zooming out on the world and on your life and to see that your life is just a fucking blip. It's just a little fucking spark in the realm of everything. Like you get dumped. Okay. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. Nothing matters. Like, if you allow yourself to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, to know that the world is just going to explode or the sun's going to explode and we're all going to die and freeze. Or the global warming or what? what like, we're all going to die. You're going to die in soon. But the whole world would, like, nothing matters. Nothing matters. Not see that more you zoom out the less tra the less tra the less tragic your life looks like and that's a very free space to speak in and to express in not in the woods like oh trying not to stutter if that's the biggest thing in your life trying not to stutter your life is going to look fucking tragic but zoom out have bigger goals have a bigger value bigger things than trying to appear fluent like it's so like for me right now it seems so silly and there's so many more so so much more things in in this life that would be able to give you a life worth worth live worth living of course that's my own uh, opinion but zoom out zoom out all right let's go on to the third quote <clears throat> this is huge good relationships are essential to the healing process good relationships are essential to the healing process all right there's a time and place to be alone in your room and journal and meditate and have solitude where you reflect on your life that's essential but what's also essential is developing good relationships okay and you can't develop a good relationship if you are still trying to hide yourself so this goes back to quote number one of um re revealing yourself fully is essential good relationships are also essential again like these aren't my words this is the king's words this is basically gospel being spoke right now so if you have no healthy friendships no healthy relationships in your life it's going to be extremely fucking hard to heal the stutter to heal these interpersonal disorders you, you don't have these disorders when you're in a room by yourself you have these disorders with people and you need to you need to develop good relationships okay let's go on to the next quote next quote if you want to choose the pleasure of growth prepare yourself for some pain if you want to choose the pleasure of growth 
prepare yourself for some pain. I won't speak about that. I'll let you pause the video and allow that to resonate with you. If it does, it definitely, definitely does with me. Let's go on to the next quote. Live your life to the fullest and then only then die. Don't leave any unlived life behind. <clears throat> Live your life to the fullest and then and only then die. Don't leave any unlived life behind. Okay? This unlived life that's a a great way to to kind of put some healthy fear into somebody it, like imagine yourself 80 90 in a in a in a rock in a rocking chair you can't go out and travel the way you can right now you can't go out and have fucking do the sports you can right now you can't go and do the same things you have the access to right now we're all gonna die we're all gonna die you won't get to live this life again depending upon how you think about death and how you think about life like reincarnation all that shit you have one shot you have one shot are you gonna spend your one shot thinking about how can I be fucking fluent like that shit makes me want to laugh. And it's the way I thought about my life for the per for the 18 years of my 18 years of my life was like, how can I appear fluent? How can I avoid the stutter? How can I not get embarrassed because of this? And if those are the major goals in your life, you're going to be sacrificing so many things in your life that will a lot will that would give you so many fucking regrets on your deathbed in that rocking chair or wherever you, you want to Im, imagine yourself being live your life fully fully and then only then die do not live do not leave any unlived life behind that shit's powerful dude Let's go on to and do that. Let's go on to the next quote. Though the fit though the fit though the physicality of death destroys us, the idea of death may save us. Though the physicality of death destroys us. The idea of death may save us. So this is very closely related to the last quote. And this that if you get shot in the head, you physically die. So if you physically die, that destroys us. But the idea of dying, the idea of, of imagining your death, or imagining not being here anymore. He says that may save us. And I truly, truly, truly resonate with that too. And I know Irvin Yal Irvin Yal Irvin Yalom has helped so many of his pa so many of his so many of his patients through this uh, through 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 this exercise of imagining what is what is writ what is written on the on the on the on the tombstone on your tombstone when you die and what will be written on your tombstone is what people re remember of you and to think about how you, how you lived your life and to think about 
if how you lived your life and the major things you had in your life were to be put on your tombstone, how would that make you feel? Like, imagine right now you're a person who stutters. Just imagine it. Um, and imagine most of your life you've been trying to avoid this stutter. You've been sw you've been swap you've been swapping words. You've been weaving between the stutters. You've been holding back. You've been, you've stayed silent. You've been a pro at avoiding the stutter. What's written on your tombstone? This guy really good at dodging the stutters. Sick. Like sick. Congrats. Is that what you want to be re want to be remembered for? And if it's not, why the fuck are you doing it? Why the fuck are you doing it? All right, so just the idea of death. Thinking about your death allows you to look at your life right now and say, why am I putting so much value into X, Y, and Z? Really, really huge shit, okay? Last two, let's hop right into it. If one is to love oneself, one must behave in ways that one can admire. If one is to love oneself, one must behave in ways that one can admire. Now, this relates a lot to in my, I forget what episode it is, but it was like four episodes ago where I said, why you stutter? And remember the graph, I'll throw it up here or here somewhere, where you will stutter to based of based upon the dig the de, the de, the the degree of where your where your self where your self esteem is where your self worth is in comparison to the awesomeness of the listener so the higher the awesome the perceived awesomeness of the of the listener is to your self worth the more you will stutter but the higher your self worth is in comparison to the awesomeness of the listener, you'll be free. You won't be filtering. You'll be spontaneous and you'll speak effortlessly. Now this quote is, if one is to love oneself, one must behave in ways that one can admire. So in my course, I talk about ways to improve your self-esteem, ways to improve this self-worth, ways to improve this self-respect. And one of the ways that is huge is by acting in ways, having daily, ha having daily habits that allow you to admire yourself. That is something that is hard to do, that you do every day, that you don't want to do. But in the act of doing it, you build self-respect. Through doing this consists through doing this consistently, whether it be going to the gym, whether whether it be doing an ice bath, whether whether it be running, whether whether it be doing deep work, stuff that takes effort and isn't a tri and isn't a tri and isn't a trivial thing, that is hard work. Doing that every day allows you to build this self esteem, build this self worth because you're doing hard things and without flaw the people that have come to me who 
are de- are struggling a lot with their s- with their stutter. I look at their ha- I look at their ha- I look at their habits and I would say 95% of the time they're not doing hard things. They're staying in bed and they're scrolling when they wake up. They're not going to the gym. They're inconsistent with the gym. That inconsistency it breaks that self-trust. It breaks that self-respect. It says, oh, it's, all, it's only when I feel like it that'll that'll go. That's not living in a way that you can admire, all right? Living in a way that you can feel admiration for yourself is how you love yourself, is how you improve your self-esteem, your self-worth. And then in comparison, the awesomeness of the of the listener is lower. Um, and I, I try to do this every single day. There's a habit that I do where I go to the gym and then I go straight into ice water. And a few days ago, I really didn't want to do it. It was already pitch pitch black out when I left the gym. And it was and it was rain and it was raining and to go to this lake, I had to walk through like pitch blackness for like ten minutes. I had a little light on my phone, but I was in the woods, like pitch black, and I was raining. I was like, I don't want to do this. When I got to the water, I was like, it's pitch black. There could be anything in there right now. But I did it. Stayed for. Like, two or three minutes in that ice water. I'm in uh, Czech right now, Czechoslovakia. And um, I got out and I just remember me saying to myself, nice chase, nice chase, nice chase. Like when I say nice chase to myself, I know that I showed up for myself. And I just... I'm just in a different mode then. I feel so content with myself. My self-worth is high. My self-respect is high. My value is high. My self-value is high. And then in comparison, the awesomeness of the listener also drops because I'm also reinforcing that my worth, my value comes from internal measures, what's in my control, my actions, not how another person thinks about me. All right? Huge quote. Let's go on to the last and final quote I want to share with you by Irvin Yalom. And it's, whoo, it's a big one. It's short, but it's powerful. One comprehends oneself in order to not be preoccupied with oneself. One comprehends oneself in order not to be preoccupied with one's self. All right, so when I saw this quote, it reminded me of when it reminded me of the most painful times I had with my stutter and with my busted quickly with every girl that I was with the most painful times the most times where I'm like fuck is life even worth live is what is life even worth living is when I would have a bad stuttering day I would stutter a lot I'd hide a lot I would hold back a lot and then I'd get home and distract myself I would play Clash Clans, or I'd play Xbox, or I'd watch you, or I'd watch you, or I'd watch YouTube, all right? I wouldn't understand what the fuck just happened in that day. I would go immediately into distracting myself because I did not want to feel what I was feeling, the shame, the embarrassment, the hopelessness, the helplessness. I didn't want to feel that. So I distracted myself. But this means now, 
that in conversation and in interaction and in my life, I'm going to be constantly preoccupied with myself because I don't understand myself. It's just going to be a fucking haze. Like, what the fuck's going on right now? I don't understand it. Why am I stu- Why am I stu- Why am I stuttering so much right now? Why can I not last longer? These thoughts will be preoccupying me, causing all this stress, causing all this tension, which causes it to come out more. This quote, one comprehends oneself in order not to be preoccupied with, with oneself, is that my life changed. The moment I had that bad day, that bad stuttering day, or after I, I really liked a girl and then we had sex and I busted in 10 seconds, instead of going to distract myself, I would sit with myself. I'd write down how I felt. I'd write down what happened. I'd write down why I felt so much shame. I comprehended what the fuck happened. I comprehended why I was feeling what I was feeling. So I can go into life now, not preoccupied of like, oh, what's going on? Because I didn't distract myself. I understood it. So I can be present. So I can be there in the next time that I spoke, in the next time that I had sex. I wasn't stressing out because I comprehended it. All right, so there's so much peace that comes with comes from understanding and comprehending oneself. I'm pretty sure that's what he meant from the quote. Um, regardless, that's what I took from it. So those are eight quotes from Irvin D. Yellum that I really love. And I recommend all of his books. All of his books, when when the, when the, when when Nietzsche wept the Schopenhauer cure have to be my two favorite but all of his books are fucking phenomenal fucking fucking phenomenal now let's go straight into the two questions coming from you the listener I wrote them down here first question is from someone named Dor someone named Dor Someone named Dorothy, 18 years old. He or she says, I want to know how to speak well in public, like presentations. Stuttering has really dimmed my light. I can't speak when I have something to say or know something. So I first want to say thank you for this question. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. I just want to point something out in your question right now. You say, I can't speak when I have something to say or when I know something. I see that a lot. I can't. I can't speak. I can't speak when I want to say something. You can speak. You can. Instead of saying can't because words fucking matter, the real word is I don't. I don't speak when I have something to say because I value being liked, being not judged, being new, being new, being new, being neutral in someone's eyes over being myself. That's why you don't speak. It's not that you can't speak. It's that you don't speak. And I say that with love, even if it sounds harsh, but it's true. Okay. And you say, um, how to speak well in public, like presentations, this, okay. So this isn't something that you're just going to snap your fingers and boom, you're going to speak well in presentations, presentations, and speaking in public is a different level of tension. It's a different level of stress that's going to arise in your body. Okay, so public speaking is the number one fear, I believe, in the world. And the second fear is death. Number one is public speaking. So there is going to be a higher level of tension in your body 
when you do presentations. So knowing this, and this is what a lot of speech, what a lot of speech, what a lot of speech therapists get wrong, is they say, okay, well, the simple cure is to learn to not stutter, then you'll be confident. So just read out loud in a room by yourself. That's bullshit, all right? That's not going to work because in a room by yourself, there's so many things wrong with what I said, but in a room by yourself, the level of tension in your body is zero. Well, there's going to be tension in your body, but the added tension, the stress, the fear to be judged is zero. When you talk to a family, a family member or a friend, there might be more tension. When you talk to someone you just met, there might be more tension. But all of that still is probably nothing compared to a compared to a presentation and the and the tension you'll feel there. So what we want to do is make giving a presentation the the amount of tension that feels like make it feel like you're talking to a friend. And that takes time. It's not a snap of the finger, but when you talk to that friend of yours, how well do you speak? You're free, right? If it's a good friend, you're free and you're flowing and you're not thinking about it. And you can speak exactly fine because the level of tension is low. And the only way to practice speaking at that higher level of tension is putting yourself in environments where you're exposed to that higher level of tension and you prove to your brain you didn't die you prove to your brain everything's fine so this could mean going into toast going into toast going into toastmasters toastmasters is a public speaking or public speaking organization that probably has a group where you are i don't don't know where you live don't don't know where you live don't don't know where you live, Dorothy, but I can pretty much guarantee Toastmasters is within one to two hours of you that you can go and give public speaking. Um, do pol- do public do public speaking every week. There's that, and there's also things that I love called com- called com- called comfort zone challenges, where you go and expose yourself to a high level of fear, to a high level of fear to be judged or fear to be rejected or fear to be whatever. Uh, You expose yourself to a high level of it, even higher if you can, which you can, even higher than the fear you have in a presentation. So this this may mean in your school, if you're going to school right now, when everyone's walking down the hallway to do push-ups in the hallway, like the fear that you'll fear that you'll feel there, the fear to be judged, the fear to be shamed, will be extreme. Will be higher than any presentation. But if you can get up from that, and your brain understands, I didn't die. You, re, you reinforce that it's safe to be judged and it reinforces you can stutter because your stutter in comparison to doing push-ups when everyone's walking in the hallway is nothing. It's nothing compared to what you just got desensitized to. All right, so that's a huge part of this is learning to get desensitized to a high level of stress to a high level of fear, so that when it's time to talk, what the fuck do you fear? You're just flowing. It's what uh, I think. This, I think this is true that more na- more Navy SEALs die in training than they do in combat, and it's because they train so hard. By the time they go in combat, that shit's easy. I say easy in quotes because, of course, it's not easy. But in comparison, their training is so much harder so that they can really fuck shit up when they're out in combat. And it's the same thing with speaking. If you want to really be yourself, desensitize yourself to a high level of stress, to a high level of 
tension, a high level of fear. So when it's time to speak, pfft, shit's fluid. That shit's nothing. All right? So that's huge. Hope that helps. Um, so actually, just to quickly recap, join Toastmasters and start doing some comfort zone challenges. Don't think it's going to be a snap of the finger. It's a process. It takes time. But you're not going to get there by doing easy shit. Period. All right. And next and last question of the podcast, of the show, is from a guy named, or a girl, named Singh. I believe that's how you say it. He or she says, I have tried everything to cure my stutter, but it's becoming worse day by day. And the words I used to speak fluently before, I stutter on them too now. So, again... Thank you for this question, Singh. I I want to point out the wording of this. And the wording is that um, I tried everything to cure my stutter. And basically, every time I hear the word cure, it makes me feel like, oh, you're going in the wrong direction. Because when I, when I think of cure, I think of like completely gone. You're never going to stutter again. And when that's the goal, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. Because when that's the goal, you're going to be ju- you're going to be judging your growth based upon how much you are stuttering. And here's the thing. To actually grow and to actually overcome this, you need to face fear. You, you need to face your fear. And I've talked about this a lot. It's just you need to. And here's the thing. You're going to stutter more in situations that arise more fear. And if you need to face fear, but you stutter more in those situations, you will leave the situations feeling like you failed. Because you stuttered. And because you think you failed, you did fail. Your body will respond in that way. Your mind will think in that way. I felt will cause more stut, which will cause more stuttering, more tension, and more self doubt. Rather than facing that fear and saying, "Hey, I faced a fear. That was what was in my control. The stutter. It was just a byproduct of the tension in my body in that moment. Of course, I'm going to stutter more." Of course, I feared it more. The only way to overcome this is to get desensitized to this fear and to learn to not care and to not value if I stutter or not. And through going, achieving, through your journey, taking that route of judge of, ju- of judging yourself on your actions, did I t- take that action or not? Yes, I did. I won. Is Actually, I believe the only way to achieve what you actually want to get rather than did I stutter? Yes, oh, I failed. Did I stutter? No, oh, I won. That is, it creates a very unhealthy relationship which gets you stuck in a spiral. So that's just what I think the word cure means a lot, which I just want to point out. And you say, I, I'm... It's getting worse day by day. Words I used to stutter on. Words I used to speak fluently, I stutter on now. I just want to say, that's... I just want to say, that is normal. That is normal. That is normal. All right? I want to normalize that. I want to normalize that it's normal for, for your speech to go like this. All right, especially at the beginning of your journey, it may be like very up and down, but through time, the up the ups and downs are usually longer apart, and they're not as high, not as low, or if they are high high and low, they only last for a very short amount of time, like half a day or a day or two days or three days not six months like mine used to last 
Like I, a bad day will last six months for me. Like that shit isn't anymore. My, my speech still does fluctuate. I'm not a fucking robot. But if I hit a bad day, that's not going to last very long. And I don't even know like when my speech gets very bad because I'm so cool with it that it's just, there's no like all there's no all there's no alarm bells in my head because I act the same way regardless if I stutter or not through just facing my fear and through the journey that I've been on. All right, so you're you're good, man or lady. Like, don't worry. That's the best thing that I can tell you. Don't worry. If you're stuttering more, don't worry. As long as you are facing your fear. As long as your goal isn't to... Your goal can be whatever. But I would just suggest that if your goal is to completely remove the stutter, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. So continue to face your fear. Continue to not judge yourself if you stutter or not, but continue to value your actions the most. Did I take the action? Did I face that fear? If you did, condition yourself to feel good. Remind yourself that you won. And you start to value your actions over your stutter, over the reactions of another person, over the fucking outcome. And there, your self-worth is in your control. Your value's in your control. And you'll see when your value's in your control and you can rise it, your, st your stutter becomes so small and it doesn't matter if you stutter. And as a byproduct of that, you stutter a lot less. A lot less. And you don't care when you do. You can be yourself regardless if you stutter or not. And that's what we're actually all truly after, period. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and sing. I hope you felt that. Again, if the goal is cure, replace it with overcome. And what I view as overcome is to not be held back from it anymore. And don't worry if your speech goes up and down. That's normal that's expected you're going to stutter on words that you normally didn't stutter on i would even say that if if you're if you're that aware of like i used to stutter i used to be fluent on this word but i stutter on this word now you're too close man you care too much about it zoom out so that you don't even know like did what did i used to stutter on that i don't know like that shit, that shit doesn't matter. That shit doesn't matter. It's, com it's common. It's common. It happens with everybody. With time, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And with time, you don't care about it. Period. So, this was a very chill episode. Um, been doing a lot of ice baths, as I've been telling you. So, I feel very, very chill. I hope you enjoyed that. I believe this is episode 11 or 12 of Forbidden Authenticity Within. And again, I do have a course that's just got launched, Overcoming Stuttering, if you want the free trial, which is the first module for completely free, no credit card needed. Click the link down below in the description. All right, so much love, and I'll see you in the next video or podcast.